So the fine people at Equal just sent me this new controller to do a bit of an unboxing review, so I'm kind of excited, so let's check this baby out. What's going on guys? Devin with Reef Dudes. Now today we're doing an unboxing. The Coral just sent this over, it literally just showed up in the mail. So this is kind of the first look unboxing of it. See what the controller actually looks like. Now I'm gonna do an unboxing and we're gonna check it out. And next I'm gonna throw it on the tank with my main tank, which has the Apex on it. I'm gonna try and run them side by side for a week or two and get a good feel for it. Kind of show you guys how to set it up and then kind of my thoughts on it, so. Alright, so we got the Ecore Pro, so this looks like the main brain head unit for it. We got this guy, we got the Power Bar 6, so 6 outlet Power Bar. Next we get cable set for pump. So we got a couple different cables, and the last but not least, we have more light cables. Um, so this would probably be if you want to hook up something like, I'm guessing kind of like a castle type of deal that does it through the port. Um, control itself. So it comes in black and gold. What color did I get? We got the black version. Controller itself. Bit of like a plastic controller case. Looks nice, fairly simple. Uh, we got pH, ORP, and salinity along the bottom. One and two, those are probably accessory ports, and there's a bunch of other ports along the bottom, so we'll figure out what those are within a minute here. We got, looks like a little iPhone SIM card removal tool. Let's we'll see what that's for. Okay, so this guy is, looking at the bottom, this is an ultrasonic level sensor, so Look on the bottom, there's two ultrasonic sensors. I've used these before in our Arduino type of projects. It does, we'll send out little ultrasonic waves and measure the distance and time it comes to take back. So you could use this as a water level sensor. So you can have this in your sump. The one cool thing about it is you wouldn't have to worry about salt creep or anything else affecting it since it's literally touchless. Those are nice little probe holders. Ah, very cool. Um, I do really appreciate those little probe containers. I've seen lots before where they popped off and it's leaked in the container. Four different probes, we've got salinity, temperature, port, and pH. Now it looks like we've got a few more goodies below. Um, this will be our extraction manual. So we got lights, pumps, temperature sensors, level sensors, and some USB ports, which I'm guessing is for connecting some other accessories. we got our pinpoint calibration solutions. we got our power connector to run it. And we have a nice, feels like a fairly heavy duty metal mount for it. And our salinity calibration. So there's all our parts. So this is the brains, this is the controller. This is what's doing all the magic for you. Uh, I'm kind of guessing it may be in either Arduino or Raspberry Pi based one, just judging off some of the sensors. Uh, it could be an embedded board too. Uh, so on here, what do we got? We got Go Mobile, power control schedule, historical usage, six octaves, double protection, and power meter. This is the Pro version, so it does come with a couple extra sensors and probes. So here is the power bar. We got a main switch on the side. E-Coral USB output, so there's a 5 volt 2.1 amp output on the side for USB. Uh, there's a reset switch, so that's probably what that little iPhone plug was for. Uh, power, Wi-Fi, network cable, so you can plug into the network. I believe it does go through Wi-Fi as well, which is a nice feature. And yeah, so it's kind of a quick look. Now for actually setting it up. So I'm kind of debating now if I throw this on the main tank and compare the Apex or I throw it on the Nano. I think I'll throw it first on the big tank for a week or so so I can compare it side by side with the Apex. I think that'll be a good way to do it. So let's get this baby plugged in and get her set up. So now we're at the tank. I just plugged in a quick power bar and I'm gonna set this up for the first time. Now there's a power switch on the side of this. So when I turn it on, you can hear the relays click inside and all the little numbers light up. There's power there, there's a network port here and there's also a Wi-Fi signal. Now, I believe everything all talks wirelessly together, so let's set this up and try that first. Um, instructions, very basic, but it essentially shows that everything wirelessly talks to each other. So you plug everything in, you can use either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and all the different modules will Wi-Fi talk to each other, so it's kind of cool. So if you could have your power bar on your stand, you can have the control on the wall, they don't necessarily have to plug it into each other. So as long as that's a good connection, that's actually a cool feature. 
Okay, so on here, power on. So first of all, power on. So let's turn on our controller. Now for the app, I the app is called EK Cole Pro. So I just downloaded this from the App Store. Uh, so we're gonna launch the app. Now it wants us to pair it via Bluetooth. Um, skip for now. Just create a quick account. Okay, so we just created our account, so I'm gonna log in. So, all right, so we click the plus sign, add the first new eCoral, power on the eCoral, wait one to two minutes until both status and Wi-Fi LEDs are showing. Now looking at the top of this, as it said, we got status and Wi-Fi. Um, so they're both flashing slowly, so we're good. So click I confirm. Now I'm gonna click next. Now it's checking the Bluetooth connection. I'd like to access my camera. So scan the QR code sticker on the core. So we got a little QR code on the back, so I will scan that. So now it's probably doing something like in the Apex Fusion where you can link it up. So it's kind of a similar thing, I believe. So, Reef Dudes. Okay, so add my tank, add that. Now it's gonna see, check what our Wi-Fi connection. So this is gonna attach it to our network so we don't have to have a cord in there. So DevNet's my Wi-Fi and more top secret passwords. Yeah, so definitely pretty basic instruction. So far it actually walks you through very easily. Um, so doing that, so we're at the pairing stage. Next is Hardware Connect. So plug in the other devices and set up control. We're gonna wait a few minutes before we get all the probes and everything plugged into it. Reef dudes, there we go. My tank is online. So pH, salinity, or P, newer version is available. It's all right, so calibration skip for now. So online update. So I'm gonna update the firmware on the controller. So just say update and do not power it off. Yeah, I definitely never wanna power off any device for that matter, like phone, same thing. Like on an iPhone, it does not let you update the software unless you have at least 50% battery or it's plugged in. So same thing goes with any of these stuff. Unplugging something while it's updating could brick it or break it. So always make sure it's plugged in, don't touch the cords while it's doing its thing. And this goes for any electronic device. So time remaining about three minutes. So right now it's downloading. Take a break, enjoy some nice coffee. Validating, it's going pretty quick. All right, done. So that was pretty quick to do it. Um, set up the EK Power 6 now. So the Power 6 is your energy bar, controllable bar. So let's go set that up. So click plus to add it. Um, Wi-Fi signal. My Wi-Fi is flashing slowly. Yes, it is. We can see that light blinking. So we'll check the box, click next. Um, name your EK Power. Ah, it's called Power Bar. Perfect. Okay, so it, in each port, you can tell it what it is. So number one, we'll say lighting, sure. Um, the second slot, I'm just gonna say empty, empty for now until we get those hooked up. Um, so looking at the menu here, so our default value off and on. So we'll say, we're gonna default it off and then we'll turn them on afterwards. Um, so water pump, heaters, chillers, power heads, others. Okay, so everything's off and we'll turn stuff on as we add stuff to the outlets. So, so far it's actually a really easy process to set this up. Okay, so it's configuring, so it should be programming the outlet power bar right now. Take a sip of iced coffee. All right guys, so now I've been running the Ecoral controller for probably about three and a half weeks now. The first half a week, week or so, I had it set up on the Big Reef, and I did this to try and compare it a bit with the Apex. Now the problem with that was I wasn't really testing a lot of the outputs and stuff, I was really only monitoring the inputs. So after that I shortly realized it wasn't the best test and I moved it over to the Red Sea Nano Tank. 
Now on the Red Sea, I plugged in absolutely everything I possibly could into it to fully try to set it up, go through the steps of automating it, and it was actually a super easy process. So I do give the Coral one thing, they do a great job of making it very easy to set the controller up, calibrate it, and add functions. Now on that note, it's kind of a bit of a little double-edged sword because some things I feel like I couldn't 100% control it enough. Like I'm a, I'm a big techie. Now, if you want to do some advanced custom coding, you can't necessarily do that like you could on the Apex. But on the flip side, so far I actually haven't had to. So the stuff that was built in did what I needed so far for all my current situations. So let's launch the app. Uh, when you first open the app, you're kind of greeted with your tank. Here's all your different parameters. Now that when you, there's a little refresh button up on the top left. So it doesn't necessarily refresh itself. You have to click that button. So something to note. So we got our pH, salinity, ORP, got our water level, uh, temperature probe. So everything is in here. You got all your monitoring at the top. So whatever one you want to see, you just click on it. If you want to see a different graph, you can just click between the hours or the days or the weeks. So looking on the bottom here, the first little one looks like a little submarine. Those are our scenes. So in, for the scenes, um, basically they're like if you want to do a bunch of stuff at once. So I made one for feed mode, another one for maintenance. So I'll quickly actually just delete this and show you guys how to remake one. Okay, so we want a maintenance mode. So let's just say maintenance. This one will say water change. Water change mode. Uh, what do I want to pause? I want to pause all my pumps. Toggles. What are your toggles? Your toggles are basically your outlet. So I want to turn off the flow from my skimmer. Switch it off, don't care about a delay. Duration, so we'll say 30 minutes. And save, so it's that easy. So literally click, now when I click execute, it's gonna turn all my flow off for the next 30 minutes. So perfect for water changes. Now there's a button extended for five minutes. Now my one little mini gripe right now with the app is if right now it says 2950. If I minimize it, so I'll wait like say five seconds and I open it back up, 2948, oh, let's try it one more time. Yeah, so 38, 37. So when you minimize the app, it kind of pauses the timer in a way. It doesn't physically pause it on the tank. I did test this. So if I turn it off on, if I close the app and open it an hour later, you'll still see the timer countdown, but your tank will actually resume and everything as normal. So I did kind of ask them about this and they're gonna look at it in a future update. So it was my one little mini gripe. So not the end of the world because it still works, but it was just one of those little things I thought I'd point out. Uh, next screen over, this is for your manual controls. So we got our lights, our pumps, and our toggles. Uh, lights and pumps, I couldn't fully test because I don't have like a Kessel or any of the zero to 10 volt accessories. Uh, toggles do work. So this is if you want to temporarily say, turn off your flow or if it's on, turn on off. So basically override the auto. Now thing to note in this one, if you click away from the screen, it all clicks back to auto. Um, and I did ask them about this one as well. And they said it's more of a safety thing. So you don't forget and leave something off. So if you did want to turn off something for an extended period on a pump and you want to unplug it sit for whatever reason, you'd have to go into your power bar and change the defaults through here. So just a different way about doing it. Now they do have power monitoring on their outlets. If you look in here, you can kind of see, so for the AI Prime right now, it's drawing 29 watts. My heater is drawing 1.2 watts. Um, I do have the cobalt neotherm, so it's probably, it's a digital heater, so it will draw a little bit of power when it's not actually on. Now you can't control stuff based on the watts output. It'll be nice if they do that for a future update. Um, it already has, obviously has that capability built in. I did also test this with a kilowatt meter just to kind of see, and it was within about half a watt. So it was actually fairly accurate. So that's good to see. Um, for in here, so EK core, so there's your main head unit. You can see what's all plugged into it. A uh, whole slew of other ports with a zero to 10 volt. And power bar, if you want to configure a plug, you can go in here, see which plug it is. You can just tell it what it is, pick your symbol and what the default value is. So very easy to do. Um, if then, this is kind of like your backup statements or your kind of controls automation. So on here, I'll just delete a couple and recreate it. Uh, AI Prime. So this one, for instance, AI Prime. So turn it off if the temperature is ever above 82. If it drops below 80, turn it back on. We'll also have another one to turn the doser off if it's over the pH is over above 8.3 and turn the heater off if it ever jumped up to above 80. So these are kind of all your fail safes to add one. Plus at the bottom, which would you want to apply it to? So we're going to say, okay, so turn the skimmer off based on what? So we'll say a skimmer or a 
water sensor. So if the water level is greater than one inch, turn it off. If it's lower than one inch, turn it on. So you could use this for say an auto top off, or you could use it for this kind of fail safe backup. So you know, if the water level is too high, turn it for a return pump. So all these kind of backup safeties. Um, you can also schedule stuff. So in here, again, lights, pumps, those are zero to 10, can't test those, the toggles. If I wanted, I could schedule something on um, one of the outlets on here to turn it on and off at certain times. Maybe have a wave maker that turns on and off or you only want to dose every second day, you can kind of toggle your stuff in here through that. So it's kind of a nice, easy way to do it. Um, your alerts are hidden through the settings menu here. So same thing, you can set an alert. So if my ORP is ever above 400, send me alert. Her temp's ever above 82. Say if water level is ever above two more inches, send me alert, check. So that easy. So they did an amazing job on making this super duper simple to program. At the top, this little webcam icon. Um, I didn't have one to hook up, but if you have an IP camera, there's a few kind of built-in models you can program in. Bluetooth device, so they're gonna obviously have a leak sensor that either is out or coming out. Um, others, Cage Guardian. So if you have Cage Guardian, you could hook that up and kind of integrate it, ah, which is pretty cool. So I can probably show that on the screen. So. Overall, um, for brand new product, first one of the app, I'd say they, they're doing a pretty good job on it. There is a few things like the screen, like you have to hit the refresh, it'd be nice if it auto updated. Um, and, and a couple of those little, with the timer that wasn't quite updating. So a couple little things that could be fixed, which probably will be in a future revision. But overall, the controller's been doing a great job on the nano tank. I've had zero complaints, other than those couple little pop-ups and kind of mini annoyances. So yeah, I definitely do give it to a Coral. They did a made it super duper easy to set up, calibrate, do all the basic functions. Now, if there's something I didn't test, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely test it out and let you guys kind of know how it works or do a future follow-up video on it if I get some more detailed stuff that you guys want to try out. Um, so hopefully in the future, there'll be other cool stuff like power monitoring we can trigger off of and different stuff like that. So hopefully that kind of answers a lot of your questions. If you enjoyed this, smash that like button. If questions, comments below. And if you guys want to pick up one for yourself, there will be a coupon code in the description. So be sure to check it out. All right, guys, catch you on the next video.